to break down episode seven of Succession, the fourth and final season tailgate party as you often see i'm not alone i have a recurring guest that joined me last week and is here to have a good time tonight we tailgating ourselves nine Mm -hmm. uh so glad to have you back on man again guys you can check out his information in the description of this video a lot of great content you all can consume and watch and not fake the numbers you know, mm-hmm. hit, watch yeah. the videos 50,000 times, but don't fake the numbers like <laughs> exactly. uh, Lucas did <laughs> in tonight's yeah. episode. Nine before two we Indians. actually. Uh, two Indians. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one. Nine, before we break it all down, initial impressions after we both just got done watching episode 20, 25 minutes ago. How did you feel after watching this episode of tonight's Scorpion versus the Rat? It was brutal, right? Like that Shiv was all up in her bag and she was pulling out all sorts of different weapons using a shovel to get under people over people seems to like be under the impression that like all normal like this is just everyday regular shit that you know people have to go through but man she's snaking the whole team she can't trust nobody to be honest Hey, can you blame? I mean, as we'll talk about, can you blame her? Because we find out that Ken wants to do a reverse Viking and leave his sister and his brother in the dirt and go on a on a on a Viking tale of revenge with Frank. So I mean, they're all yeah, and I don't know what what Roman is. <laughs> Roman is just roaming around right now. Can't catch a break with Jerry. He's trying to get his brother Connor to get off of the election. That is not successful. This was not a good night for Roman, ladies and gentlemen. For all my Roman fans, and I'm one of them, he didn't have a good night. But I tell you who did have a good night, and that is Connor Nine. Connor and also his his wife, his supporting wife, may I add, Connor and Willa, ladies and gentlemen. Love Nine, them. never in a million years, Nine, would I've had suspected that in an episode full of couples of as we'll talk about Ken and Reva having a moment, you know, Tom and Shiv, Jerry and and, and Connor or and Jerry in Rome, uh, Ebba and Lucas. The fact that Connor had his wife backing him up surprised the hell out of me, Nine. Who would have known they would have been the most strongest couple in tonight's episode? I loved it. You know, when Connor said, there's only one person here that doesn't think I'm a joke, mm. I was like, ooh, that is beautiful. And you know what? Ever since Logan passed, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, at Con- Connor's wedding episode. Yeah. Um, I've come to the realization, like, when they are united against that like big threat that Logan was, yeah, I was able to tolerate everybody a lot easier. Mm. But now that Logan's gone and they're all at each other's throats, all of them are despicable, yeah. except really for Connor. I kind of like that he's handling like the family business, taking care of the funeral role yeah. arrangements, yeah. um, and just kind of just being himself, take not not stabbing everybody in the back, right? He's the only person that doesn't got the knife ready. Yeah, he's he's focused on him and his wife's future, his potential, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. President, which, listen, we'll talk about the trailer at the end. I, the way the show, and I jokingly said when he was running for president, what if the show secretly makes Connor the president? Yeah. That trailer made it seem like there might be some some crazy numbers some, messing yeah. around. Something right, might surprise yeah. everyone, and Connor might end up on top. But we'll talk about him tonight. But uh, shout out to Willa uh, stepping up for her husband and, and all that stuff tonight. But to kick off this episode, my friend, you know, we see Tom and, and Shiv. They got back into cahoots last week, and we're going to, you know, slowly but surely let people know that we took a break for a minute. Now we're back together. Listen, Nine, I'm not married, but I've had my fair share of, you know, relationships and, you know, serious relationships. And no one's perfect, Nine. No one's perfect. But I think in the handbook of things you don't give your partner, especially when you just got back in a relationship, Nine, I don't think you give your partner a a scorpion. Uh, Scorpion, a crustacean. Like, what Uh, (laughs) is that? And say it's a joke. Um, Nine, I need to know how you felt about this on this opening sequence where we see, again, he's giving her breakfast. And the conversation turns about, you know, for the party tonight. And he gives her a scorpion, my friend. Talk to me, Nine. Was this a good idea by Mr. Tom to set the mood for his So the uh, thing is, is how it starts <laughs> off. <laughs> it, that was a bold move. But how it starts off, I was like, okay, they seem to actually be on good terms, being able to uh, uh, kind of communicate a little bit better. But then I immediately mm-hmm. felt that something was off even before then, just because it felt like, oh, Tom is now just back to his role, like just mm-hmm. kissing up to Shiv. Right. 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 And right. I mean, we've seen that with Tom. Like, mm-hmm. if he feels like he 
you're good for him or whatever he wants, then right. he's going to kiss. The, he's going to be <laughs> kissing your ass all the way through. <laughs> but then when, uh, <laughs> but when um, he gives her the scorpion, I was like, huh, that actually does fit for them. Like he seems to be aware of like all of the crazy sh- things that they go through or the things that they do um, mm-hmm. for their own self-preservation. And from that, uh, the talk that they had last episode, right? Yeah, when yeah. The truth bombs. Ended. Yeah, the truth bombs, right? Mm-hmm, I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys both agree that you're both terrible people, self-preserving right. people. Like, this gift seems very appropriate. Kind of, yeah. It seems like very appropriate. Like, it almost seems like, okay, we can use this to bond over because we're like both, we, <laughs> we're both snaky, cr- crabby people. I'm not really sure why Shiv reacted so, what was she expecting? What is a good gi- uh, gift for the Roy family? Anything, really? I guess the preserved scorpion is the best uh, answer for that, man, because I'm telling you, so I totally agree with you, Nine, that, yeah, this to me and Tom's, if I was in Tom's shoes, That's this smile. does seem like an appropriate <laughs> smile. It's hilarious. And her face is just like, what the, f- what is going on? But uh, it seems like, I totally agree. It seems like a, a funny joke, and especially he been, he's been going back and forth with her ever since their whole kind of debacle of last season. But I think she just assumed, like you mentioned, Back to regularly scheduled program, Tom serving her breakfast, kind of attend, attending to all her needs. But no, Tom still want to take some shots, darling. And he wants to let mm-hmm. you know hey, you are a scorpion sometimes. You are the scorpion. You bite. Exactly. You stay, you're not someone to be that can be trusted. It's a funny joke. Right. But now, and the thing that I'm still just kind of, I guess, con- not confused, but just curious about, and they talk about it a little bit later in the episode about the whole baby of it all and them having babies and she not trusting him to have a baby. She still hasn't told him that she's pregnant, which is well, at it, this point in the show. So in the season, I'm confused. Is that even that. a plot anymore? Uh, because right, you know, she, we found out in episode three, she's 20 weeks pregnant after the loss of her father. And I'm still just, and you know, the conversation at hand was, is it Tom's? Is it, you know, we'll talk about Nate. I'm just so curious, not about this whole baby situation of it all. I'm starting to feel like it is not Tom's baby because why wouldn't she tell him at this point that she's pregnant? And it seemed like they don't really know what to do with that plot line as of yet. Or if it's yeah. something that like taken care of on Shiv's part, because their conversation at the end kind of made me believe that Tom found out and they just decided not to keep the baby. So but that seems what like a conversation that needs to be on screen, you know? Like, a, exactly. a, of course, we're in the final season. There's so much to kind of wrap up and who's going to be the one to rule the, the Waystar company. But it, it does seem like it's a plot line. And, and it's in it, from all accounts, it seems like the showrunners had a plan. They knew from A to Z how they were going to end the story. But it seems like the baby of it all just kind of came out of left field. Um, and I'm not sure on where, where the wrap up, where the resolution of it all is going to be. I would imagine all the stress that she's dealing with, I, you know, would maybe cause some complications. But I mean, hell, nah, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that plot. And I don't know if it's something to keep an eye out for. But speaking of uh, babies and baby mamas and, and whatnot and complicated relationships, a character we haven't seen, and man, I, I couldn't tell you when. I think it's been back since season two, maybe. Let me know in, 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 in the chat, guys. When's the last time we saw this individual? And that is ex-wife of Ken, uh, Reva. Uh, mm-hmm. She's there to tell Ken that her, the ATN and the, the whole election situation going on has kind of caused some scares for her daughter because some people are not the biggest fans of ATN and they, Clearly. Were, yeah, they, they pushed her, I believe in the street and said some things at her school, which definitely is nothing um, to take lightly. And Ken doesn't take it lightly. He even questions her as a mother. Where were you doing this? What, what happened? Tell me all this stuff. And I don't know, nine, you know how I feel about my man, uh, Ken, but I mean, he's such an absent non-existent father. He's essentially taken everything that he's gotten from his own dad, Logan, and, exactly. and never there. I don't think he's a, a dad. I mean, we haven't gotten a ton seems of scenes. Like less absent than yeah. Logan. Like more absent, I should say than. Uh, yeah, he Logan doesn't even take them. His, like yeah, he, we've never seen him like truly take them in or teach them mm-hmm. the son, his the, you know, his son and daughter the ropes of business. Maybe I don't know, man. This whole parenting, or I should say, fake parenting to me was just something that I, I, I again, I'm a Ken fan, but I'm gonna throw him under the bus on this. It's like, bro, you don't care. You don't really care. You, you really just pretend to be care. I'm doing this for them. What are their names, Kendall? Right. (laughs) It is unfortunate, but at the same time, it's like, Ken, you're fake pumping your chest up right now, man. What are you really going to do? 
Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and, and the way he was just coming at her, right? Yeah, calling her he bad just mom, at, or like, not bad mom, but like a scene waiting to shoot. Some in, implications like, yeah. oh, where were you? It's exactly. Like, I where were you? Raising our kids. <laughs> like, where were you? Exactly. you? I, I would like to see more of that plot line um, followed up with. Um, true, true. It almost kind of feels like, because what, we have three episodes left? Yeah. It almost yeah. feels like, yeah, we could have gotten another season, right? Um, it started, we talked about the baby, even, you know, the relationship with his wife. There seems to be some threads or plot lines that are might be left to be unanswered potentially I, to your point now i don't know if we'll ever follow up with this reva daughter being right in the middle of this yeah. political situation so and I, I guess the question i have for you and everyone in the comments i guess what what did you take away obviously besides ken being kind of a you know want to be dad but besides that was there anything else that you took away from this scene besides him saying i'm doing this all for the kids and you know i'm making the world safe is that a, a, a logan um kind of antidote to type of say that, what, that what just did you seemed think? like what did not say? even seem like it made any sense like yeah and you could be handing them the reins to whatever business that you want them to uh mm -hmm. and what we're going to get like a succession with all of uh uh, uh kendall's kids nah <laughs> <laughs> that ain't even gonna yeah, happen. I wouldn't be that that gonna that happen. Yeah, I, I yeah. wouldn't be down for that. But yeah, let us know in the comments, guys. What did you think about that? You know, kid's my boy, but I, he's he's definitely not the best dad, just like his dad was. But speaking of the dad of it all, Roman, Shiv, Ken, and Connor have their first meetup. I think this is the first time we've seen all of them together on one screen yeah. since finding out. Yeah, since finding out that their dad died. Uh, so what is that? Four episodes now. But or, Connor's or keeping. Yeah. He Connor's is such a weird guy, dude. He's what does he say? He's like, I, I saw dad today. Like, and, and you know, Connor's kind of off you know <laughs> filtered uh you know his childhood he's like yeah i visited dad again and he makes a comment like it feels like it's therapeutic for him to see dad who's there but not really there it's like mm -hmm. okay sure I, woke I, up on I, the right I, side of the casket today yeah yeah it's like said, God, yeah. Not, not the right thing to say connor but yeah. the question that or the the topic at hand is he's you know polling pretty well again i don't know if the show's going to give us connor mr president well, connor yeah. here. he's polling uh, pretty well in alaska and a couple of the um you know states there but more importantly, he brings the question to the table, Nia, which I'm assuming the way this show is shaping up and based on the trailer from, for next week, the Logan funeral might be the finale. Uh, they might end this show with all the kids saying their final goodbyes. Mm -hmm. to their dad i think that's or maybe episode nine but i'm feeling like it's going to be a finale that they were going to actually get the funeral of logan but the question is nine is who's going to speak at the funeral which we'll talk about a little bit later connor goes away with ken and roman shiv that they want to invite the fake jake jimmer hall aka nate to this party because they want to continue to spook manson off of the deal and we can see nine that shiv's clearly uncomfortable with this not only because of the what they're still trying to do with uh with lucas but more importantly invite nate to the party after her and her husband are getting back on the same page which yeah. speaking of she's texting tom some you know some they're they're acting very like they're acting like they're like this is 2.0 like, honeymoon stages texting each other some very interesting stuff there what'd you think about all that man and and shiv and her position of power of she got manson on one line she's going to be getting her ex to the party she's talking you know sexy with her husband shiv's on a high right now yeah yeah i mean <laughs> she seems to be um thinking that she's like the puppeteer or whatever as you said kind of like on a high or in control Good, good suit, by the way. I don't really think that she has a heart, but you did see something on her face when she had that, like, out that they want to have Nate back. Yeah. But it almost seemed like it was more so uh, just for the calculation of the deal, right? right. Not really right. of something like, of like, oh, I'm worried about Tom or, you know, having all of this stuff be brought up at the party but more mm -hmm. so um that it's just going to be complete make things more complicated for her for her to pull her strings right 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 and i think that's like an important distinction to make i totally agree with you too and we'll get to the scene where she does seem to have been uncomfortable with the idea of nate being there like she actually might have cared about tom's feelings for 0.2 seconds but mm -hmm. again i think like you said and this that that smile on her face right now says it all where she's just like 
I'm doing this deal with my brothers. Meanwhile, I'm, you know, in the bed with the devil with uh, Lucas and keeping him in form and stuff. I'm going to be, again, having my ex-boyfriend involved in this, you know, tailgating party. So right now she's, she's smelling the roses. She's in kind of full control. But in this episode now, as we'll talk about, things just kind of crumble uh, all in front of her. Her relationship is now back to ground zero. Old Lucas of it all is kind of blown up in her face. So again, these characters, I can't, keep leaving out the fact that early in the season, Ken, Roman, and Shiv, when they were all working together, Nine, things were actually going good. But as mm -hmm. soon as they started backstabbing and doing all that stuff, it just destroyed everything. They can't help it. They can't, man. They can't help it. And they, they really can't even help it to the point of like seeing a common goal all the way through. Right? Exactly. And that's exactly, when man. Uh, Logan was like that you know, is the linchpin for them to even be able to work together. Navigate through this episode. I don't want to neglect my man, Greg the Egg, uh, who, as we remember, Nine, just a couple weeks ago, Harry's situation when she wanted to be a news reporter or a news anchor, mm. he had to give her the bad news. He was very, very nervous about doing so. Yeah. Uh, but fast Such forward to now, flavor, he's just Greg. Like, yeah. I need to fire them? Bet. I'm right. there for it. I mean, we get this scene here at nine. He has become, again, you mentioned last week, he was always kind of our entry point to the show. He's kind of us and viewing these rich, you know, mm -hmm. conniving, conniving people. But now he's become one of those people. So he's almost like, I don't know who our point of view is now. We're just there on the journey and just watching all the madness. But he is getting kick out of firing all these people. And there's a couple other scenes that we'll talk about with Greg in this episode. But generally speaking, Nine, what do you think about Greg doing all the firing and then later on making jokes about it with uh, with Lucas and that he was willing to fire uh, Ebba a little bit later? Is he is his head getting too big? Is this going to blow up in my man's Greg? Is, is that egg going to crack is my question for you, Nine. See, <laughs> uh, is the Greglet going to make an omelet, wanting to be a cutthroat, but doesn't really know how to do it. And that actually kind of maybe comes off better for someone in that position. Like that kind of seems a bit more timid and unwilling to do it, but has to do it. Yeah. Right. Um, but we do know that last season, uh, that conversation he had with Tom, he's like, well, who needs a soul? Yeah, you know? so <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, so Greg seems pretty committed. He feels like he's a top contender for whatever position. Like he could be trying to snake Tom, right? At this very moment in this some type of capacity. He has played the game. And I know, uh, listen, Greg for a while was a character that I just always got, I still do get a kick out of. I think the way Nicholas Space, the character is so great. But I mean, he's come from being the clown and a joke and the, you know, the character that we always just kind of ignore, kind of like a Connor, but he has played the game. Like still is a little bit, but like still, yeah, he's playing yeah, no. the game, right? He is. Uh, he's as opposed to Connor. Later in this episode, he says a comment where he's like, uh, where Tom tells him to kind of, you know, uh, kiss up to, to Lucas. He's like, I don't know, Tom, I'm going to might just stick on the Rome and, and Ken train and just kind of, again, just la latching well, on to Lucas whoever's winning. hates me, so yeah. why would I, you know, back him? Right. He's he's smart, man. He's a smart idiot, as I've always said. He's in the he's at the right place at the just the right time. And I'm very intrigued to see what the show where Greg lands. Like, is he gonna be the head of ATN by the all of this? Like what you just mentioned. Will he <laughs> snake out Tom? He's running oh my goodness. Snaking out Tom. Nine. Can you yeah. imagine a news network, a conglomerate like ATN, which is like Fox News or whatnot in our landscape. Can you imagine someone like Greg running the news? I could oh not. My <laughs> oh my I think it's funny because we don't even really know what Greg <laughs> believes in, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. I don't think he believes in anything. We just know that he's up to the task and willing to do the job. But we got a party to attend, and uh it's time to tailgate, my friend. We head to the party, and you know, right off the bat. Tom lets his wife know he's pretty tired, but uh, he's going to have to step up tonight because uh, an ex is coming to the party and Tom plays it cool. I think this was, you know, the, the scorpion at the beginning of the episode. Now Tom's finding out that Nate's going to be attending the party. He, he's playing it cool at first nine, but one of the funniest, it was a quick no, scene, but it was a funny like ass scene. Dying when inside. Nate comes to the party. And if you guys remember, the season one when Tom finally kind of stepped up and, and kind of told 
Nate, how he felt about him and the whole joke about the wine and take, that's my wine. You can't drink any more wine. And he inevitably oh. kicked him out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that call back to when Nate and Tom have a bit of a, a of a talking, it was one of the funny again quick scene. But the way Tom plays comedy, whenever you see Tom kick back, which is so funny, man. What did you think about Tom telling Mister Nate that? Uh, oh, you can go ahead and have my wine. It's it's a difference between you know being a wine con you know connoisseur and mm -hmm. you know whatever he said. So I, I don't know. I just thought that scene was so when funny. he says, "Well, I've missed you." <laughs> I thought that was the whole, most hilarious thing because that's like literally the last thing that you would want to hear from this man that I yeah. missed you. You can have all the wine that you want. Like, okay, I'm not even going to be drinking no wine. I'm not drinking nothing that this guy's near um, because yeah, he, he, it looks like he's going from my head here. It's a complicated uh, spot because it almost seems that um, Nate would have found out or realized that people are trying to get Tom fired, right? Mm, mm -hmm. That Tom is not actually at that, you know, legit uh, spot on position to make all of those big moves, right, um, which right. I thought was pretty dirty because, you know, like Shiv is also not going to be backing him up at all. Uh, he invited their ex fling to the whole shindig and is just playing all different sides. So, yeah. And, and at the end of the day, he's tired too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Speaking I, of hosting parties, uh, we find out that this whole Macon and, and the other candidate is is not looking good for Rome and his team because it seems like Macon is is kind of not highly regarded as a lot of people are thinking. So the whole camp for Macon is telling Rome that hey, we need you to convince your brother Connor to drop out. And nine again, I think Connor might be my. And we'll get to MVPs a little bit later, but just a little insight of where my mind's at so far. Connor like really did He's a good job. And I've and I've been talking about it for a while. I feel like the show really doesn't. I mean, I know they use Connor for sometimes levity and just to kind of sometimes break the tension, but I, I don't feel like he's never had truly a, a story or a plot to be attached to like anyone else. Mm -hmm. But tonight he impressed me, uh, Nine, as we see that Rome approaches him and, and he offers Somalia and offers him, you know, he comes back and says, you know, give me the UN. And then he yeah. talks to his consultant, which I think was, if I'm not mistaken, was the uh, the Pierce. I think that was like one of the Pierce members, if I'm not mistaken. And him and, uh. him and uh, um, Connor hit it off when they first met each other in season two. But, you know, he doesn't want the U.N. or he does. He offers the U.N. And, you know, ultimately <laughs> they tell him, Connor, we don't want to put you. He says, you know, self um, anywhere with nukes, anywhere with nukes. We can't. Well, like, I don't want to go nukes. anywhere that doesn't have nukes, actually. <laughs> that was one of my favorite lines one of my favorite lines wow. of the episode um yeah, yeah I, I feel bad for connor because like even when um they met up at that uh at that restaurant mm -hmm. he when he was talking about like oh yeah i'm clinching onto some percentiles or whatever she looked at him like oh yeah you are running yeah. for president <laughs> like that's right how is that going like i was like damn yeah they don't Give no love to Connor. Appreciate how he's sticking to his guns. Yeah, you gotta he respect. He's not afraid to, you know. He, what what did he say? He said that I've, you know, put in too much money and blood much, into yeah. this thing to just drop out like ten hours before the polls open. Yeah, man. I, I think like, oh. out of all the kids, uh, not I think you might have mentioned it earlier. Um, he seems to be the only one right now that seems to be he's yes he's kind of living in Connor land and Connor world with running for president and all this stuff, but. In reality, he's the only one and in this weird, crazy, chaotic world that he has his stuff together right now. He has a wife, a newly wife that seems to support him, which none of these characters can say that other than him. Mm -hmm. He's doing something uh, for himself, which is running for the president of the United States of America. <laughs> none of these kids are doing that. Hey, man. Can you imagine? Man, I'm telling you, man. Again, I, we'll get to it later, but uh, Connor is definitely on my front runner MVP of tonight's episode. But Getting back into it, nine. Again, I mentioned Frank and, and Jerry arrived. Roman surprised by this. But then my boy, Kenny Ken, Ken who took a little bit of a backseat this episode compared to last week when he had his moment to shine. And, and, and by the way, we do get a moment in this episode where Roman does kind of tell his brother that he's sorry, that he kind of bailed on him on stage. Uh, and he's like, that's all right, little bro. You know, I'm still on that high. He is the wave. 
he says in this episode. But we have this moment here where he's just, you know, back to back weeks. He's 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 controlling the room. He's controlling the narrative. He has people's mm-hmm. attention. He has this little speech here, a moment of silence for their father. And you know, they normally this is a big deal for them. And it's, it's a great line that he says in this moment uh, nine that I wrote down here. We watch history. We make history, and one day we become it. Uh, I, I don't know. I thought that I was like put that, that was on a, on a really comedy. good send off for uh, you know, you know, to yeah. address the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, the I loved it, man. In the room, right? Until Vanilla Ice <laughs> shows up with his that. golden. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is bro. A great call. man, <laughs> Matson's uh, Matson's fashion is uh, definitely something. I guess it's European. Um, yeah, man, talk to me, nine. He comes in perfect. <laughs> Perfect timing, I guess you could say, why everyone's having this moment of silence. He comes in with his, uh, you know, um, Tiger King look, and he disrupts the the good juju in the room, and, you know, he, he breaks the moment of silence, and we see, you know, they're clearly clueless about this, uh, referring to Ken in Rome. They didn't think he was going to be there, but, of course, Shiv's playing stupid. Oh, I didn't know. No, like come on, Shiv, you're 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 playing good. You know your your brothers are believing, but we all knew she knew this was going down. But as they say, Operation Nuke the Luke is underway. Nine yeah. as Shiv is now talking to Lucas, uh, and, and and the dynamic is just so electric to me. As you as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I'm a big fan of Alexander Skarsgård, and he is kind of the the Logan 2.0 of a sorts in the second half of the season. She's giving him the advice of who to talk to, who to bump elbows with. And she says, you know, just kind of stay out of your way. Don't be the, the the Lucas that we know saying inappropriate tweets. Don't um, make enemies tonight because, you know, he's purchasing the biggest cultural asset out there on the market. But mm-hmm. let me know, how did you feel about Lucas in tonight's episode nine? How he navigated, how he seems, he was very, every episode in this show with him in it, especially a couple weeks ago, he seems to always control his own narrative. He seems to have a good temperament. He knows how to control the room. He was thrown off in tonight's episode. And I don't know he if was it was because of the big wigs or the numbers coming out. He was kind of, he was a little weak in tonight's yeah, episode. I, I think uh, that's kind of like the testament to um, Skarsgård's acting or his character uh, right, for right. this one. This episode is just kind of like, oh, they chipped away at it just a little bit, right? Right. Um, he's trying to be the golden boy. <laughs> as we can see um and uh, really uh, as you said like this would have been i feel like logan really would have gotten along with uh madison right like uh, he yeah really did He's, um kind of admire him and wanted him to take him on as his own son. I was going to say nine some might say he's the son that Logan always wanted, right? Cuz mm-hmm. he does kind of have that persona and that kind of bravado where he can disrupt things and make people uncomfortable as we know that was like the Logan treatment to everyone. He he's he's a master at making you feel uncomfortable and I think uh Manson is definitely that type of character. But like I said in tonight's episode he seemed to be a little bit thrown off, uh especially when we get to the scene about his numbers being fake, but not knowing where things go and that's Ken and trying to set up this whole uh, Operation Nuke the Luke. He's just running his mouth and telling everyone his little plans. But we have the scene. I thought first that off, was a bit have, brave. Yeah. Like, I, like not even brave, just like bold. Actually, I was like, man, you're really everyone's gossiping here. You yeah, just once you tell one person, you know that everyone is going to know about it. Exactly. Which I guess yeah. to to that point too. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I don't want to skip it over. But the scene prior to that, you know, the seed was planted with the time of it all where we have a conversation being had between Lucas and Nate and Tom kind of gets into the mix and the whole idea of there's going to be major changes at ATN, AKA Tom being fired. And that's when the seeds being planted that Shiv didn't say anything on his defense. She just kind of played along with it because she says a little bit later, as he said to her, oh, the scorpion was a joke. Well, you being fired is a joke. It's like, no, there's certain things you don't play with. And right. someone's livelihood and then calling yeah. someone a scorpion is not something you say to each other. So mm-hmm. that is definitely a scene that I thought was very interesting. But getting to, again, Ken's talking to Nate. He wants to, he tells him that he wants the deal to go off the table. And Nate kind of, you know, listens to it and kind of listens to him in a moment. But the sidebar between Lucas and Shiv, as they're kind of talking about him doing good, uh, for some reason, I thought that he was going to make a move on Shiv. Like he was going to be like, it felt like that. For a kiss or yeah. be like, and she's like, I, oh, I don't. Like, 
I don't trust Madison in the yeah. room alone with anybody, to be exactly. honest. Exactly. She lets him know because this is this is her arena. You know, she used to be in politics and she's so used to the cutthroat atmosphere. She's guided him just like she was with Gil and all her previous clients. Again, we see Shiv telling him that he's, you know, doing well. And what I want to get your thoughts on, uh, Nine, is she's telling him all this good insight, putting him all this good advice, and she does something that a lot of these characters won't do, which is, hey, what am I going to get out of this? For someone of, of Lucas' stature, a lot of the people, like, we know people didn't come to Logan asking him, what can I get out of this? Like, Logan would be like, you don't get anything out of this. But Shiv goes right to it. She's like, listen, man, I've been doing all this stuff for you, giving all the advice. What am I going to get out of this? And he's like, well, you know, I really like you, and what do you want? And she pretty much puts it out on the table. She wants a significant role. And when he takes over the company, AKA second in command of situation. And he's like, it kind of threw him off guard. Now, I don't know if you got that sense that when he's like, uh, that let's thing. circle back well, yeah. to this, right? Yeah. We'll talk about this later after, you know, you do your part, which I feel like Shiv should know that. Yeah, exactly. That look right there. Just like, yeah, a bunch of side eye. Like, yeah. Bro, I, I, that should right have been there. red flag number one. That mm -hmm. this is the same, not to cut you off because I want to get your thoughts on it, but this scene reminded me so much of when Logan was playing Shiv that she was going to be the next lead of Waystar. She was, he was dragging her along, mm -hmm. feeding her this information, building up her ego, only to just take the rug under her. I don't know why Shiv is doing this over again. This is a Logan move. Like, do Logan. everything I want you to do, and mm -hmm. I going to pretend to give you something out of it but nine take it away man shiv just hasn't learned her lesson and she's just doing the same thing she did with her dad yeah i i feel like it is the same thing that i think this is spurned off from what her brothers did to her right she was under the assumption assumption that it was going to be them three right and then very quickly immediately afterwards it was no longer that it was very clear that it was going to be a kind of boys club, right? And that's what I feel bad for Shiv about because it has, it is so much of a boys club, right? Yes. And she has yep. to fight for every little scrap that she can get. Mm -hmm. um, not always going to make the best move, but do you I think that Madison could possibly be playing a long con here, a little bit of a chess move, right? With like kind of leaking that uh, India information mm. because at that party that's what i would have been doing i would have been telling people you know uh telling different things to different people kind of like see what got out what comes yeah, yeah yeah right that's interesting that's interesting um i don't and, and, and you just mentioned, it speaks to the Alexander Skarsgård of it all, like the way he plays it. Like he's he, in this episode to me, he played the most vulnerable version of the character we've seen so far. Kind of mm -hmm. almost, I don't want to say like Greg levels of uh, incompetence, but he kind of played it very, he was, he played it as though he didn't, again, he didn't have control of the situation. So to your point, I don't know if it's a play, if it's an act, but that's a good question, man. I think that he might be playing a long game, but mm -hmm. he seems so off tonight that it, it that it didn't seem purposeful, but Mm -hmm. That's the beauty but of this character, man. I don't it know. It feels like he would have because he crashed the party, right? Mm -hmm. If you're mm -hmm. going to crash the party, it seems like you're going to come a bit prepared for a plan right. of action. Um, and and before we kind of get into some more of the bigger scenes, I do want to highlight the the Rome and Ken. They find out for so I don't know who told them this, but they found out a little bit about the uh, the Eva situation. They want to use this to their advantage, but this is where Nate. Uh, is brought back to the table and Ken's trying to be like, all right, man, I got some more dirt on him. Let's let's get this ball rolling. Let's try to get this nuke the Luke. And he's and I don't know. Let me know nine. I don't know what was the moment that Nate kind of just disappeared. Like he just didn't want to be involved in it anymore. I don't know. I, I don't think there was a scene that we saw besides when he met Nate in that coat room and he's like, let's let's talk about you know working together and how we can benefit each other. And then the next time he saw Nate, Nate all of a sudden is like, oh, I'm good, man. This is an inappropriate conversation. I want to wipe my hands clean of it. What what do you think changed between that coat room to when he saw Nate again? What's the alternative motive with Nate? Is he just like, I'm tired of the Shiv and your family? Like, wh what was the motivation that you think Nate kind of came up with that all of a sudden just kind of not listen to, to his buddy Ken? Well, it was uh, pretty brilliantly said. I'm not Gil and you're not your dad, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. are just not him. Right. Uh, and I'm not trying to be the person that mentored me either. Right. So right. it almost seemed like wanting okay. to continue this uh, legacy of just like straight up um, 
uh, um, the, the shady deals or whatever. He wants to actually kind of like play it a bit more straight. And I kind of like at, at a certain point kind of respect that for the fact yeah, that, you know, sure. he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, make no move or like talk shit about like Shiv or anything. Yeah, he just seemed like yeah. to just get on top of his business. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And when he found out about all that, he's like, you know, I'm not supposed to be really hearing all of this. Right, 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 right. Uh, but who's to say that he wasn't up on game about some other things too? And he's kind of mm-hmm. like just playing this more for his own self preservation. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, I think like Nate is in the clear. Like he, I didn't see him do no wrong. Uh, he <laughs> did no wrong. So yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear you, man. I definitely want to uh, speak to the point that you mentioned about him kind of playing the sides. I, it is, I guess it is something to remember that Nate has dealt with his family. He did. I don't know mm-hmm. how long him and Shiv dated, but I'm sure he's seen his fair share of how the Roy's get down. And it's something that he's not mm-hmm. a fan of probably. Uh, so I think to, to kind of answer my own question, why did he back out of this deal? I think he's just remembering these are the Roy family. Uh, Logan's out of the picture, but these kids ain't no better than him. So he might just mm-hmm. want to, he knows what he doesn't want to sleep in that bed anymore. So I think maybe he's just like, he's just remembering who he's in business with and with them not really having the head of the snake being there. And these kids are just running around mm-hmm. mentioned earlier. Why are you telling me, why, why are you telling me this? Uh, right. Yeah. It's, it's messy. It's very, it very does messy. messy. Yeah. It's going to be uglier yep. and it's going to be just worse, uh, as, uh, Luke said. So, yeah. I agree. And shout out to, listen, shout out to Nate, even though I I, I'm, I don't like, uh, you know, a man sleeping with another woman who's getting engaged, you know, that's, he's always going to be on my, my dog, my, 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 uh, you know, bad list for that. But he did, he, he was very, I don't know if honorable is the word. He was very classy tonight. You know, the whole mm-hmm. time of it all, how he handled that, this mm-hmm. whole kin of it all. So shout out to Nate. Uh, you know, like I said, yeah. dollar shout store. Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Coming through <laughs> being a uh, man of honor. Welcome to the episode here. Greg takes his crack at Lucas, even though he says that he's not his cup of tea. But he's somehow, Greg, again, he's just money hungry or power hungry. He finds his way to get entangled with the Emma and talking about, oh, I'll fire her for you again. Just doing whatever he can to, to look good in front of anyone. He pretends to do that to fire her. He kind of embarrasses her in front of everyone. So we see uh, Ebba is upset. She's embarrassed because, you know, her boss slash ex-boyfriend is, you know, just saying, I want to fire her, this, that, and the other. But Ken and Rome, you know, they take their shot at her. Uh, they go on the balcony and they kind of get some. And again, you mentioned it, Nine. Was this a ploy? Was this plot? Was this a plot by Manson? Oh. Let's pretend to be bad boss. You got some dirt on me. See where mm-hmm. it goes. Um, but pretending well, it's that it's like is, an open secret that yeah. we're going to act out in front of everybody. Exactly. Like, there's exactly. something kind of like shady about this. Like it seems like a setup. Very much so, because as you know, as we learn in this episode, that Shiv told Manson to uh, Matson to be on his best behavior, and that seems to be a very kind of left field type of behavior to kind of you know embarrass your girlfriend or not girlfriend, but employee in front of everyone. In this scene here, uh, you know they're kind of acting childish. So it's it's weird, man. Like I said, that's why I love this character because I don't know what he's thinking, I don't know what his next move is, but the next move for Ken in Rome is to try to get information from her and they get a pretty big nugget nine and that is essentially that the numbers aren't looking that good she mentioned something about you know her her contract or something about being under him till february because of the india situation so there seems to be some type of ticking time bomb that it will be revealed maybe that's like maybe the quarterly meetings with the investors that it will be uh you know out there that the numbers are, are cooked um so we have the moment nine where Ken and Rome tell Shiv the news, and she is completely fabricated. She is completely left She's off like, guard. Ah, oh, damn it! Yeah, she finds out that he's been cooking the numbers, doubling the numbers. the The minutia of it all is Shiv confronts him. If there's some issue with the subscribers, which I think is so is definitely a dig at like Netflix. Because if you guys follow Netflix, they don't ever tell you. They'll say. Stranger Things was the highest watched show of our of our program. Yeah, like, what does like, that mean well, exactly? What, what, can we uh, compare that to something? Yeah, what does, we, yeah, like, what does that mean to us as consumers? Like, okay, that's good. Three hundred something. Is like, yeah, uh, like more than ten people watched it. That's what exactly. we'll tell you. The numbers are being cooked. The money that he's, you know, the quick close angle that he's trying to do, his plan is to close quickly. And, hey, maybe by the time all this shakes down, maybe the numbers will be even by then. And and Shiv's looking at him like, are you an idiot or are you just stupid? Like, what? 
and, and mm -hmm. that's the moment and then i want to get your thoughts that her i don't want to say her plans but kind of her her thought process of like screwing over her brothers just kind of blew up in her face and that that could be a pretty big number that you're fudging there yes that could actually be uh a monumental like it's going to take down the whole company Huge. completely oh, take yeah. down the share price or whatever and if he's saying he's banking on this deal to go through to you know, alleviate those problems, then he's in a tough he's spot. Ooh. Shout tough. out to Shiv. Shout out to Sarah Snook with the with the looks in this mm -hmm. episode. There's so many great <laughs> moments. That she's just like, what? Always, always serving looks. Always serving she's looks. Always. always um, but yeah, it, it, but it kind of felt good to see her like be like, ah, you thought you thought yeah. you had them. <laughs> You know, just all crumbling apart, man. It's like even though their dad was despicable, non, uh, really wasn't the most loving father. He some somehow, some way, kind of kept everything afloat. This isn't. They're now getting their hands dirty, and they're seeing what. And I'm not condoning Ro, uh, Logan's actions and just being a terrible guy, but he kept their he kept his kid his kids hands clean. Nine, they are now dancing too clean, it's too clean, right? They're now yes. seeing conniving people the lies the backstabbing the numbers being fudged this is what they logan are on a regular serious basis people they are not, not serious people, people. Yes, uh, and yeah they prove that to each other um and to the audience every episode mm -hmm. and the thing that chip has to her advantage though is that because their family is so used to being so conniving she mm. could be like okay i was screwing you guys over now here's the plan. This is the information that I know. And they would be like, oh, okay, cool. All right, let's roll with that. And they would move on. They will just like move on from that shit. She has the ammo now. She knows about the, the Ebba blood giving situation. She now knows about the cook number. She, like you just said, she could do that. But will she do that is the question because mm -hmm. it's at the end of the day, they, they, they lie and they cheat and they steal and they do all these things mm -hmm. to one up each other. So will she use this to her advantage? Will she somehow find a way to, I don't know, I don't want to say blackmail uh, Matson, but I don't know, man, this is, is, is going to either blow up on her face or she's going to find a way to survive as, as Tom says a little bit later in this episode, but Getting back into it before we get into my favorite scene in this episode, I want to talk briefly about the um, the Rome and Jerry of it all. Nine, Jerry drops the mic on on Rome. Nine, she tells him, "Listen, bro, I'm mad. I'm upset. Yeah, I'm at this party, whatever the case may be. But here are my terms, Nine or uh, uh, Rome. This is what I hold over you. Uh, mm -hmm. The next five years, I can come with you with a deal where I ca I got the receipts, all those pictures you sent me. If you change my narrative." I will destroy you. And she just pretty much walks away and says to him, you could have had it all. If you would have just kind of kept me under, you know, I could have led you to the promised land. Been, yeah. We yeah. would have seen Zion, right? We would have been on the top of the mountain. And <laughs> listen, Roman right now can do nothing but lose. And he did that so quickly where he really didn't realize that he is, taking away one of his like one true friends that actually like kind of knows his wavelength or whatever can kind of handle him knows when he's going out of pocket he cut that off terrible decision especially if it's jerry because she low-key is the goat right someone she that is. you would always want on your side so once you poke that she know jerry knows her worth she knows that she could, you know, she could be out of here, you know, with a uh, hundred, two hundred million, like a golden parachute or whatever, and be good. Mm -hmm. And you messed that up because once you challenge her character and like uh, uh, her decision making, that's when you know you you out of pocket, you out of pocket, homie. Well said, man. Listen, this is the way I look at it. We know that probably Logan's a, a sexist, uh, that he probably devalues women. He looks at them lesser than the the fact that Jerry has managed to stay in this power position with the way we know Logan moves speaks volumes to her character. So the fact that Roman Good thought point. that he could screw her over is just another reason of why these kids aren't serious. The Jerry banks. is no one you want to ruffle her feathers because she mm -hmm. will, she got the family receipts. 
she got the D picks <laughs> to put him out there and destroy his life. <laughs> so crazy that he would even oh think about that being acceptable. And one of like the coldest um, Jerry lines um, this season was she said, "I uh, I danced this company mm. through a fucking thunderstorm get without up, getting up, wet." Right. <laughs> uh, I couldn't agree with you more, man. Uh, nine. Jerry is no one you want to play with. And she let Roman know she can drop that bomb whenever she wants. So shout out to Jerry. But uh, we do see Roman like a little child. You know, he just got put down by his mom. He has a meltdown and he's going to Connor with that negative energy. He's trying to feed off of what she gave him and try to give it to someone else. And it doesn't really work out in his advantage. And I'm speaking to the scene nine where he comes at Connor and is like, listen, Connor, you're not serious. No one cares about you. No one takes you seriously. Da 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 da. You're gonna do what we're saying, and he snaps. And this is where you know Kenny even steps, and he's like, "Hey, Rome, calm down, bro. This is our, this is family." Mm -hmm. And then the day, let's let's not do this in front of everyone. And then uh, a moment that Don't we kind of talked heads. about. Yeah, <laughs> the moment that we talked about, but just to kind of fully elaborate on it and to get your thoughts on the nine, Willa stepping up for her man. And, and even before that, the fact that Connor said, I just need one person. What's the quote that everyone makes fun of Lady Gaga when she's like, if there's 99 people in the room, I just need one person in there or something like that, where it's essentially, I just need one person to believe in me to really become the person I want to be. And, and that was definitely a moment that I, I, even though I don't really care too much for Connor and Willa, that's probably their best moment on the show for me, that she, that he has the confidence in her and vice versa. And she steps up for him, man. Again, I know we talked on it briefly, but and just- this fire fire like yo i am about to big dog you so hard right now uh i think roman said something like oh just eat the carrot right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. it's like bro i'm not one of these people mm. right like <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, like i'm like i i committed to running for president and mm. you think I've been in this uh, situation um, just to get one up on each other about, you know, who's going to be running the company or I've been trying to uh, uh, connive or anything. No, I yeah. he's the only one that is like, I'm good to go on this thing and I'm ready to just put it all up. So I really like this conviction here. No, like, I think that's one of the best things about connor's character that he is very self-aware or he's become more self-aware um throughout the seasons of right. how people view him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, it's it's a really good uh i don't know that's a really good character development subtle but very nice again like i said at the beginning of this episode that i would have never imagined that these would be the two strongest and most uh, fine on each other couple of this entire show and here it is here it is mm -hmm. man if Again, I feel like the show hasn't done the best job of really fleshing out Connor, but this relationship has definitely kind of come full circle. And it was a moment I definitely appreciated because, you know, just thinking about all the moments that he's been, uh, again, I think you touched on it earlier, the fact that they lost their dad. It was almost like, yeah, it was sad for him, but it's almost like he can finally be, he doesn't have to finally have the pressure of impressing his dad. He can now uh, be his own person for the first time. I, I would say Connor's probably in his late 50s, early 60s. So for the first time in his life, he doesn't have his father under him and to try to impress him. He only has this woman who now, if we talked about it earlier, who semi loves him in her own way. Um, and now that he has someone to back him, which I, I would imagine he's never had Roman, uh, Ken, Shiv, and more importantly, never had his dad support, but now he has someone to back him, and I think he uh, he appreciates that. And uh, what a beautiful thing to see! Now, getting back to it, my man, um, we get we get several confrontations in this episode, not only from a couple's perspective. We just saw Rome and Jerry kind of go at it, but now we get the uh, the alpha males, or at least they think they're alphas. At least one of them might be. The Your other numbers one, are gay. Be Let's get to it now. Yeah, that is like the most. Uh, let's get to it. <laughs> Ken versus Lucas, my man. We have Ken like, you know what, man? My brother got at you last week, but let me tell you what I think about you. So they're playing kind of softball, kind of playing the room in front of, again, everyone's showing their hand in this episode, just revealing themselves in the worst way possible. First, it was Ken who took the first shot, talking about the numbers of it all. Then Lucas shoots back at him and says, you know, great presentation last week, talking about his dad and using him as part of his uh, marketing ploy. And then, as you just mentioned, Lucas, like, nice burn, bro. Your numbers are gay. <laughs> what, is that even, what does that even mean? Oh, they're putting the cards on the table, and then they hug and kiss each other. It's like, nine, I don't know whether to 
just scratched my head, applaud at the scene. What did you think about these two again, these alpha males, or at least they think they are? Uh, what did you think about this scene and uh, how it all played out, man? So alpha, so sigma, omega yeah. males here. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, these are so terrible. These, these are terrible people. Um, was not impressed by that showcase at all. Yeah. I was impressed by the acting in it, but I was like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah, these yeah. are Perfect. literally children. Mm -hmm. And again, um, let's not like even gloss over the fact that this is pretty true to life, right? Like they are, we do have these parties with the super rich elites or whatever that are deciding crazy uh, uh, implications for the nation, yep. right? Yep. And, um, mm -hmm. and as much as we uh, see it as like a red versus blue situation, yeah, yeah a lot of them bump elbows to each other, mingle and um, make decisions in, together, but in private, right? right. And um, it does kind of feel like this little um, peek into what that would actually be like. Mm -hmm. um, and they're both bros. They're both like bro for they, they seem like fraternity douchebags yeah. or whatever I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It is it is so true, like you said, Nye, that there are literally sometimes uh just idiots that are making these mm -hmm. decisions. And this scene perfectly encapsulates how schoolyard yeah, drama, exactly. like, exactly. oh, I heard you were talking about my dad, yeah. and I am going to like, call you out. Your numbers are gay is like something you would say in like, like literally like <laughs> right. <laughs> Say it, bro. Like, who talks like that anymore? Like, what? It's time to get to the main event, my friend, and that is the rat versus the scorpion. Right. So, I listen, guys, we are at the point in the episode that I was just on the edge of my seat. Cut the scene Tom versus Shiv, rat versus scorpion. Tom's tired. We've been talking about it all night. Tom has been ready to go to bed before these people even came to the party, and he is fed up, y'all, because this whole entire night, not only is Nate there. Not only is there's, uh, you know, people in his house that he might not be the biggest fans of, one being Nate, like I mentioned, but then in his own home, may I mind you all at home, he has people in his house whispering that he might be fired. To add more fuel to that fire, your wife is there listening to this, not saying uh, and not shooting those rumors down, not batting down those comments. She's just letting it happen and letting the fire grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So now the fire has grown and the fight goes from being upset, being ready for bed. He goes outside, which is the right thing to do. He stepped away from the situation. He's like, I'm tired. I don't want to fight. Let me step out of the situation. But Shiv, being who she is, she's got the Roy in her blood. She wants that fight. She wants that confrontation because they live for this, right? She goes outside. She is, you know, taking these kind of light blows. And Tom lets her know that he doesn't like the fact that people are joking about him being fired, which I think for Shiv's point of view, it's like, hey, the same way you were joking about that scorpion earlier today is my way of kind of getting back at you. Like, this is what we do, right, Tom? We take digs at each other. Toxicity, not a good, not a good, uh, you know, uh, mix when you're just talking about getting divorced and now you're back together. There's, you know, this baby that no one knows about, but neither here nor there. Tom lets it go. He tells her, All right, Shiv, you want to have this, you know, he says, Let's just put it out there. We're outside in the, in the air, which, by the way, I was certain that one of them was going to be thrown off the balcony, but this is not Game of Thrones. They have the conversation, and I got my man Nine back here. Nine, from this point on, you know, she calls him a rat and a coward, this, that, and the third. And he goes from, you know, I really do love you. Oh, you don't love me. You just love the fact of being with me. You're just screwing me to be a part of the DNA. You're money hungry. You're power hungry. And they're just going back and forth. And then she cuts maybe the deepest, or maybe he does. I don't know which one. Let us know at home. Him telling her you would never be a good mom or her telling him, you know, I never liked you. I don't like you. I never liked you. He tells her, I don't know why you married me. Nine, take it away. What cut the deepest? Who cut the deepest? Whose side were you on with this argument? Were you ever at a point uh, on Shiv's side, on Tom's side? Take it away. Um, So I'm going to preface this by saying that this seemed so personal <laughs> you know what i mean like i feel like 
a lot of people in some toxic relationships would have been like, oh, they're they're literally us right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because boy, oh boy. Um I would say, well, I actually tweeted out uh the quote that Tom said. He said that you are too transparent to find in a book. You're you're so like skin deep, so shallow She's broken that is, is broken, um, would not be a good mother. Like wow. that felt you killed very my it, wow. dude. When I I feel like Shiv was out of pocket because he, he was coming from a place where like, yo, know, I just had to like convene with all of these people. You invited yeah. your ex here. I mm-hmm. gotta like on the low, uh, uh, you know, be cool with knowing about you snaking around or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, while I'm doing all of this for us, you're telling people and go along with this narrative that I'm about to lose my job, that I'm going to be axed. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. When what he wanted at the beginning was at least to be like, you know, we're doing this party together. Yeah. Right. Yep. So it's that kind of like lack of partnership on uh, his side that I feel very empathetic for. Mm. But he did say some things that I was like, he hates. like yeah he went a bit too hard but yeah shiv really cannot like own up to nothing though there was so much to be said at this moment and again i don't know if i have a dog in either one of these fights because they both cut deep and it's so much truth in both of it but again it, it kind of put in perspective and i i, I didn't i want to say i forgot about it but yeah it is kind of screwed up that he proposed to her when her dad was on at that time in season one, presumably maybe on his deathbed, um, he proposed to her then at a very vulnerable, as she said, a very vulnerable state that I was in. And what was I going to say? No. And have that on my mind. You know, I just said no to my mm-hmm. you know, potential, uh, uh, you know, uh, partner in life, but my dad's in, in the hospital. So it, it's th- their relationship was doomed from the start because that to me, was if you really if and I'm putting myself in Shiv's shoes, I guess if we want to if you want to be Tom in this particular case, and I'll be Shiv, I guess. If I'm Shiv, like Tom, you came at me and asked to marry me when my dad was potentially gonna die, and this power shift was gonna be, and you're gonna be, you're, you just came up on a on a on a on a lick. You just mm-hmm. married into this family after maybe potentially the king of the of the family's dying. You, since day one, have always strived to get power. I was just a ladder for you to climb on to get your family as she throws her fa- his family under into the mix of them just being money hungry and always striving to be someone important or be the Joneses. Nine, man, it was it was a conversation. I didn't think that, you know, we, we've had a couple blowouts between these two, but this was the best one thus far. And I, and I watched a little bit of the after show when they mentioned that we don't really see them yell and argue. This was the best, not only the best scene between them, but the most explosive scene between them and it was the acting was superb yeah i i think the acting was absolutely superb here. like they really wanted to be Have doing this moment. scene right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where uh it, and it feels like a very good mirror to the end of uh last episode thought they were on the same page about what we they do it. and how they yeah. act right they put all the cards on the table so, then right it, yeah um <laughs> and but this episode seemed to be like okay no they have so many more grievances towards each other right. that um are so valid mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i'm having a hard time fighting with shiv because <laughs> she doesn't seem to have any allegiances with anybody right and the thing is, it seemed like Tom was willing to form that allegiance, right? right With the understanding right. of them both knowing, or, you know, just like a toxic power couple, right? Right. We'll be, be working together, but for yeah. like a toxic goal or whatever, um, to have us like be good or be safe. Some really disgusting uh, things that they said to each other that I don't think you... <sighs> I don't know if you could come back from this, man. I think that this was, they tried, you know, it was an episode and a half that they hooked up and was having their honeymoon stages all over again, a brand new page per se. Mm -hmm. 
But at the end of the day, man, I think there was there was never a foundation to really build upon. Like you can have these type of blowouts, but you don't know at the end of the day that your person has your back. But neither one of them has each other's back. She's a scorpion. Mm-hmm. He's a rat. She told him on the night of being married that she wants to have an open relationship. He mm-hmm. proposed to her when his dad was at a low point. Um, you know, she he sold her out to the father to her, her dad, which is something she mm-hmm. never. Heard. So it's just this was never going to m- work out. <laughs> uh, one of the previous seasons, one of the best quotes, like I think the hurt that I feel with you would be less than the hurt that I feel without you. Or something mm. like that when they're sitting at yeah, the beach, I and I was like, yep. Yep. "Yeah, Tom, you should have kind of like stuck with you that because you, yeah. you you knew that." <laughs> Wrapping this conversation up before we call it a night, nine. We we end with the scene. We got a reverse Viking situation on our hands, nine, where Ken proposes to Frank that let's just tank this deal. First time Frank's hearing about this, he's like, "I don't want to hear it. I didn't hear this." But then he tells him that the numbers are being cooked. He's been making up his numbers, and Frank, how about we do this? How about Waystar? buys Gojo and do the reverse Viking. And not only that nine, but not getting Rome and Shiv involved. And he tells Frank, we can be better than my dad ever was. So That's actually that. a fantastic plan. <laughs> so we, we in there, but then we, the actual last scene is seeing Tom and seeing mm-hmm. Shiv in, in their beds mm-hmm. by themselves. And there's this look on Tom's face. And if you even take into account the trailer that we got at the end of this episode, Nine, I wouldn't be surprised. And also, too, before we wrap up, you know, Tom, at this point, exhausted. All right, guys, y'all don't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm <going to> bed. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> Tom was hilarious. <laughs> but, Nine, there's a look. So I want to get your thoughts on the Ken situation, reverse Viking. But I also want to get your thoughts on this look that Tom has on his face. It's almost like a look of, like, the ball was rolling. And it seems like he had, and again, based on the trailer, he might screw everyone over. He might throw a, a monkey wrench into this whole equation. You know, again, I know he's the head of ATN, and we talked about messing up the numbers, and he might mess up the poll numbers and might have one candidate be in position, uh, a.k.a. Connor. He kind of seemed like that. Yeah. What do we got going with this look on his face? What do we think about Ken's plan? Talk to me. You no, know, with Tom, I think that whatever he's going to do, he's, he's going to perform. Um, I really like how this season um, – has been going with like because of what we know from next episode hopefully this isn't like any type of spoiler if you guys haven't seen the preview for next episode uh, it should be picking up literally hours after this because it's going to be the election day polls and tom has a busy schedule tomorrow as running atn trying to um make sure everything goes right mm-hmm. uh and you know, if they're going to kind of um, play off of the uh, real world aspects of, um, you know, uh, you can imagine like how crazy that situation would be if it's based off of the Trump Biden election day. Right. And uh, all of these different things that were being pushed uh, for the narrative. Um, I feel like we won't be seeing anything uh from tom that's going to like just critically destroy his career or like you know put anything at risk but he's Mm -hmm. definitely not going to be siding with anything that shiv does right right so just even having shiv be around and stating her agenda to anybody yeah means that she has a inherent antagonist within tom right right Right. (laughs) and that's going to Definitely. So I don't think it's going to be a monkey wrench within like whatever ATN or whatever Kendall mm-hmm. is cooking up or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Roman is doing, but yeah. it will be a monkey wrench within whatever Shiv is going to do. So we got to your point on that. And I think you said it so, uh, so great, man. But your, your thoughts on the kin of it all, the reverse Viking of it all in one big happy family and bigger than my dad ever was. Ken trying to do this behind his brother and sister's back. Will it work? Will Frank decide to work with him? Ken on top. Waystar acquires Gojo. Reverse Viking. And and to throw another monkey wrench in that, what is the deal with the Pierce deal? 
they haven't closed on that because mm-hmm. they didn't get the money for the wait the Jobo. So are they gonna right. be sued for not buying Pierce? Because so many things are up in there. So much. So my thing is you now have went from selling your dad's company to now keeping your dad's company to now buying Kojo to now buying Pierce and not having your family involved. It's messy. It's messy now is what we're getting at. It's a mm-hmm. messy, messy yeah. Right. It's super messy. Ooh, I have heard for many, many weeks now and during the press junkets that when, when the cast and the creators were, were questioned, what's the episode that stands out to you all? None of them said episode three, which was the b- bombshell of Logan's death. Everyone has said, and the writer, Jeremy, not Jeremy, but um, uh, Jesse uh, Armstrong, the creator and writer of the show, said that the episode that everyone will be talking about is episode eight, which is next week. So we're in for a treat nine. I don't know what that means. And, and also one also a little nugget that I found out this week from um, little trades online is they're saying that the finale of this show will be 90 minutes long, which is an hour and 30 minutes of length, which I do think that will be the funeral episode. Mm. So nine, we are in for a treat, not only next mm. week, but also we know HBO is infamous for having great, you know, uh, and also, you know, episodes and then of course mm-hmm. most of the time they stick the landing hopefully they stick the landing with the finale but nine final thoughts man before we wrap up what are you anticipating seeing next week and then your thoughts on an hour and 90 mi- or an hour and 30 minute finale of succession I feel like next week it looked really good on the uh preview, the preview yeah. i was you know again succession knows that it's good at these bottled episodes it knows that you can really they they can really flex all of the people when they just have them in a room talking right we don't need um anything that's very grand but i do like the aspect that they are going to be putting in a lot of satire into it too about of our uh, of our um current uh political climate mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite episodes of the season or, or the series is safe room where there was like a shooting I- wow. at ATN oh, and they're wow. like kind of like trapped or whatever. Yeah. So I think yeah. we'll may get like an extension of that where we kind of see like how their news conglomerate is operated while <laughs> everyone is bickering and going over deals and everything. So I, yeah, I, I can see that being a pretty goaded episode. There's a, and I can't, there was a, a screenshot I saw weeks ago where there was, or not in the screenshot, in the trailer, there's a scene where Roman's in the streets and it looked like there was chaos all around him, which mm. makes me think that whoever wins the presidency is going to be a very controversial reveal, which I think it might be Connor, dude. Like, I think <laughs> Connor, Connor I was going to win the election. Uh. We wrap up. I started a poll for those that are watching a live chat before we end this uh, breakdown. Uh, if everyone can answer a live chat question and and, and for my uh, special guest tonight and everyone watching the breakdown, put in the comments, who was your MVP of tonight's episode? I'll throw my hat in the ring. I can't believe this is coming out of my mouth. Connor Roy was my MVP tonight. Uh, so many great moments, and he's come a long way from finally being under his dad's thumb to really lean in his own narrative. I pose a question to everyone in the chat. I pose a question to everyone in the comments, but I want to know from you nine. Roman. Is your MVP tonight? <laughs> uh, nine. Definitely not Roman. Um, uh, uh, and Tom, Tom Matt, Tom. Since Gold's uh, jacket is the MVP. Take um, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, Connor really just showed out this episode, mm-hmm. and uh really just like just weirdly happy for him you know just like weird weirdly happy for him <laughs> I think that's a good way to describe it weirdly because he is a weird dude uh and, mm-hmm. and willa loves his weirdness so yes uh we're on the same page i think connor stole tonight's episode uh and a great quote that nine brought up earlier um you know I don't, I, I, you can call me. A, I'm not a joke because I just need that one person in the room to believe in me, and that was Willa. So mm-hmm. shout out to Connor and Willa, the the, yeah. the best couple in the show right now. Everyone watching the breakdown, thank you for watching our discussion. If you enjoyed the breakdown, hit the thumbs up, share the breakdown. More importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe not only to my channel if you haven't already, but my man Nine. His information is in the description of this video. So definitely do yourself a favor and subscribe. Thank you for watching the breakdown. Again, we're still live if you guys are watching the breakdown. Join us every Sunday, 9.30 Central Time, when we break down the episodes. I hope to see you all next week. Let's go.